can see by the title my loves today I am going to be chatting to you guys about how to ace your teaching job interview you are welcome to take these answers as they are these are the answers that got me my job honey so if we can all use these answers obviously some guides <laughs> My classroom is a learner-centered space. I believe that every learner learns differently and there should be multiple opportunities for each learner to shine. I know that I've got my students who learn better with reading, some with writing, some with images, music, etc., etc. So my classroom has an incorporation of all these things. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm Smathi Mkize and this is my channel. If you are a regular degular, a regular liker, a regular sharer, honey, thank you so much for coming back once again. And if you are new here today, welcome to the channel. Make sure that you click that subscribe button so that you can join the regular degulars. We are on the road to 14K, so please, 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 uh, click that subscribe button it literally costs you nothing okay so please do me that favor and enjoy the rest of this video so as you can see by the title my loves today I am going to be chatting to you guys about how to ace your teaching job interview now this video is actually something that I've been planning to do for a while but I really wanted to get some experience a little bit more so that I can come with you guys with some updated information so for some of you who may not know I recently started a new job and I just went through the interview process I went through the inter interview process with quite a few schools in Beijing, in Jiangsu, and other provinces around China. But specifically, I went through a lot of inter interviews with international schools because like I told you guys, I wanted to change from kindergarten to primary school. So when I was talking to the agents, I told them I'm specifically looking for primary schools and specifically international schools. So this is the experience that I obtained during this time doing the interviews and I really thought I want to share that with you guys because one, many of of you are trying to move to China and find good um, jobs with good schools and most international schools in this country are well are formed and have good systems and this is where you need to be looking at training centers are slowly getting filtered out and so you want to look for international schools or even a public school so this video is for you I want to prepare you for the interview I want to give you some uh, do's and don'ts and some advice based off my experience I'm also going to actually give you guys a demo of how how I would answer these questions and give you some questions that you can actually prepare for the school because at the end of the day you are interviewing each other they're not just interviewing you you are trying to figure out if they are a good match for you so you have to have some questions prepared to see if you guys are gonna gel you know what I mean okay so let's start this video I'm not gonna waste any more time so what I want to start with actually is straight to the point interview questions to expect and demo answers so what I'm gonna do is actually talk through the questions and kind of just read the question and then answer it how I would answer it I'm gonna edit it in such a way that I'm gonna ask the question and then you guys are gonna hear my answer okay you are welcome to take these answers as they are these are the answers that got me my job honey so if we can all use these answers obviously some guides <laughs> not in booze oh my gosh anyway so you like you know what i mean like customize it to you add some words change some words but this is just what i did okay and then after that i'm going to share with you guys questions that you can prepare for the school and ask them because you want to know if they're going to be a good match for you and if they are the caliber of school that you're looking for and then lastly i'll give you guys some final thoughts and do's and don'ts all right so let's start so the first question that most of these schools are asking is tell us about yourself tell us more about yourself now guys I want to keep looking down because the questions are here this is such a common question that I feel like you should not spend a lot of time on okay this is not a get to know you interview this is a tell us about your career tell us about what you bring to the table what are you gonna offer um, and your experience etc etc so this question obviously you want to show them that you are a wonderful person but really start um, um, preparing this for this answer and have a short script about tell me about yourself so this is how I would do it 
Hi, my name is Sbam Kize. You can call me Sba. My full name is Sbatlim Kize. I am from South Africa and I'm 30 years old. I've been teaching in China now for four years and it's been such a roller coaster because obviously we've been away from home. So I've taken that time to kind of do the things that I love, which is to travel. I love vlogging. I love taking pictures. Also, I love spending time with my friends and being outdoors. Um, one of my favorite things to do is also just relax at home. I do believe in downtime and and making time for myself. I'm a firm believer in hard work. I love putting in um, time to um, better my craft, may it be work and things that I do outside of work. That's just something about myself. Okay, so I didn't go into families. I didn't go into lineages. I didn't tell them about, oh, I first came to China in 29. Like none of that, short and sweet. Get to the point. Tell them a little bit about what you, what you do outside of work, but also still show them that you're still focused. We're still here, okay? So you can jazz that up, but it was very short, three to four sentences, um, full name, age, and where you're from is key, obviously, okay? The next question is, what does your classroom look like? What does your classroom management look like? So this is a question that really came up a lot and I was quite surprised because when I remember when I started interviewing when I was with First Leap, they didn't ask those kind of questions. It was more like, are you ready to take on a class this size? Um, are you willing to go into training? Like it was more like a, they telling me about what to expect more than how would you manage a class? And so it felt like a lot of these questions are questions that they are setting out if you will fit, fit in with the school's classroom culture, classroom management style. Are you aware of the most updated classroom management techniques? Do you know what I mean? So this is a question that you actually need to do some reading up about. If you know nothing about what I'm saying and you are someone who doesn't have a teaching degree and have never heard any of these terms, it's really important that you YouTube. YouTube is the university for USL teachers, for ESL teachers, sorry, because this will help you get into the jargon of ESL teaching. So for this kind of question, be ready for, you know, what you would say. So this is how I would answer this question. My classroom is a learner centered space. I believe that every learner learns differently and there should be multiple opportunities for each learner to shine. I know that I've got my students who learn better with reading, some with writing, some with images, music, etc, etc. So my classroom has an incorporation of all these things. I also make sure that I'm aware of my kids strengths and weaknesses and constantly find opportunities where I can help them improve but also challenge them because I will have higher level students and lower level students. Another thing that is very prevalent in my classroom are posters, classroom rules on the board with the routines that are needed to uh, take place every day. I also am a, a very firm believer in having visual aids about uh, classroom management, um, reward systems, as well as just any other encouraging ways that the classroom culture can be improved. So this could be be kind to your partner, clean up the classroom, put your bag away. That's very important for young learners to see their their expectations in the classroom. The last thing I would say is that if you walk into my classroom, there is a lot of routine and rules to ensure that the kids are all on the same page and they, are, and they know what is expected of them. So that transitioning between activity to activity is smooth and I'm not wasting too much time trying to manage a classroom behavior or any other behavior problems. All right, so that is a simple answer that literally any of you can use, I don't mind. But also what's important, did you guys hear that I was throwing in things that someone could walk into my classroom and see? I didn't talk about what I'd be teaching, I didn't talk about my teacher talk. I spoke about the actual classroom and the classroom culture. They want to see if you are aware that in, in especially international schools, there's a, there's a shift, right, in the more, from away from the old traditional way of teaching where Every kid should write homework the same way. Every kid should submit the same thing, but no, we're moving into differentiation. We're moving into understanding that kids can still be doing the same activity, but in different ways. And you need to be aware of that. You need to understand that you might need to bring in extra worksheets for kids that are more advanced and a little bit of a differentiated, uh, differentiated worksheet or a lower level activity for the kids, but they're still training some type of skill. Do you know what I mean? Like we are more more modern teachers now, teachers who are open-minded, okay? And also, a firm, firm um, focus on classroom management, um, 
as well as routine, 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 um, you know, visual aid, all those kind of things that you must mention in your interview. Show them that you know these things, you know what I mean? So yeah, that's question two. Question three came up a lot. How would you differentiate for students with different levels, different English levels? Now, this is a question that um, as ESL teachers, we need to be able to answer um, very much so on the spot. And that's why I'm encouraging you guys to go do research about what is differentiation. So differentiation by definition, I'll put it up on the screen. I don't have it as the definition right now, but I'll chat to you more about it in practical forms. So basically differentiation is understanding that number one, every child is different and every child learns differently. And two, you may not have, every child may not have the same journey to the outcome, but you can carve out a journey for each kid or each group or level that will lead to the outcome. So these are our learning outcomes. So for example, if you're trying to teach the alphabets, okay, and you want the kids to be able to um, trace every, uh, the, uh, the uppercase and the lowercase letters, for example, your higher level kids, you will actually put an apple and you'll put two lines and you'll ask them, what's the first sound of this object? And they'll say, ah, and then you'll be like, what letter is it? Apple. So can you write uppercase A and lowercase A? There, you've given them the two lines, you've given them the instruction, they can do it on their own. That's the higher level. Lower level would be you actually putting, you know those um, letter A's that are dotted? So the kid is tracing, right? So instead of you kind of giving them free reigns of writing it on a line on their own, you're giving them some steps, right? You're scaffolding for them so that it supports them. They're still reaching the same outcome, but you've actually gi given them different worksheets to support them. So these kids in the lower level group are still able to reach the outcome. It might take them longer to to get to writing on their own but it's buildable right and they are still doing the same exercise but in different ways I hope that makes sense so that's the most simple way I can think about it so that is how you would answer it in your um, interview give a practical example so if you know that you're, you're interviewing for grade ones and grade twos talk to something that would be taught in grade one and two threes and fours same thing higher levels same thing um you're absolutely welcome to ask them for to give you an example of a topic of a certain um um learning objective that they want you to to give an example of um but i won't give you guys a specific answer for this because I've given you an example but think about that when they ask you about differentiation okay all right the next question is so important because especially if you're going to a country that is in, that is trying to teach English as a second language they want to see results so a common question that came up in all my interviews is how do you assess your students now this was something that I had never actually interacted with before in terms of in the classroom you guys know I've been working for a kindergarten for the longest time and before that I was in a training center that had all of those assessments done by Chinese teachers so I've never being the actual teacher to run assessments so I was so fortunate to learn about assessments at Moorland University that when I got into that interview I knew exactly what to say do you know what I mean so this is a question about summative and formative assessments for those of you who don't know the difference summative is at the end of the unit formative is during right during your your lessons throughout the unit okay summative is at the end that's usually gradable you give a grade at the end formative are like quizzes uh, exit tickets um, um, what else quizzes exit tickets yeah just things that you can do like different matching games in the classroom even whole class activities where you're checking with flashcards that's still a formative assessment because you're doing it while learning and then a summative assessment obviously is at the end to summarize all of this ne? so I want you guys to always remember that when they ask you this kind of question they want to see if you are a teacher who understands that every time you teach something you must have success criteria you must realize what they've what they've learned and have they achieved what was supposed to be learned can they be assessed and that assessment can tell you if they were able right to achieve the learning outcome so when you're answering this question think about that so I want to give you guys an example of how I would answer this question 
All right, so I, I love using uh, formative assessments in my classroom, especially because it gives me an idea where I can, one, deviate from my lesson plan. Lesson plans don't have to be set in stone. The beautiful thing about having a classroom with kids who are at different levels, you can actually use the stronger level students to help you support the lower level students. Um, and so they are still getting a challenge because they are doing some peer teaching as well. So I'm a firm believer in doing quizzes, in doing short, um, exit tickets in doing other in, in, and as well as using other technology like Kahoot where I can do multiple choice and kids can work in pairs and support each other in that way I also love using summative assessments because that gives me an actual measurable um, score that I can use to actually measure their progress from year to year I can also keep that data and give it to the to the uh, teachers if they are moving on to the next grade I think it's super important to keep doing assessments all throughout while learning one to see if those assessments work well in your classroom maybe quizzes are not working well I need to find another way and um, maybe kids uh, aren't doing well when they are writing um, short paragraphs so maybe I need to give them another type of assessment like an oral uh, where kids can better um, actually show their ability to understand whatever the learning outcome is so it's super important to incorporate both formative and summative assessments in in uh, the classroom and I'm a firm believer in using both so that is how I would answer that question I did kind of summarize it for you but you guys get the gist of it you really need to be um, aware of how and when to use them use the terminology needed etc etc okay and then the last question that came up so much that like took me away when I heard it a lot of these schools were asking me what salary do you want? What package do you want? Do you know what I mean? Like they were asking you up front in the interview, even though I told the, the, the agent, né? but they were still asking. And I think that is where you must put your foot down and actually believe in yourself and you know, know your worth. This is something that I did that I'd never done before. I remember all my interviews, I was actually very vocal about how much I want. And I was watching their faces when I said what I want. And some of them were like, well, oh, okay all right and you know i was being interviewed by chinese people but it was actually so refreshing to be when i was interviewed by some foreigners and i would say that and i wouldn't see any reaction because they know that you need to know your worth and you need to say what you want if you don't if you don't say it they're going to offer something less and then you're going to be left with an offer that you didn't even want don't be afraid to be uh, turned down or p companies to walk away from you because that is just a clear indication from God that this is not the job for you Ask for what you want, especially if you're a qualified teacher guys Like this is the space where you are at your like you are thriving in ESL in the ESL world if you are a qualified teacher Okay, so I'm not obviously gonna give you that answer But you need to it's at your discretion what you ask for so do some research about what is this? Okay, maybe you might not know the school, but you will know what area it's in uh, the agent might tell you what package they are offering you and then you will say the amount that you want there you won't put between this and this you won't say that you'll be like I want 30,000 after tax or I want 29,000 after tax don't be like between 27,000 and 30,000 because then then that gives them room to negotiate and give you the lowest amount that you asked for right so definitely say the amount that you want I want 30,000 RMB after tax or I want 30,000 RMB um, before tax whatever the case may be ask for that okay if you want housing or if you're asking if there's housing I'm gonna actually go into the questions that you can provide or ask them when they ask you okay so those are the questions that I wanted to show you guys and kind of give you demos on how to answer them because these questions came up a lot all right guys so now I actually want to give you guys some questions that you can ask the schools or the company or the interviewer these are important questions I think a lot of us when we go into interviews we are thinking about being interviewed and putting our best foot forward but also these schools need to be putting their best foot forward especially if you gave them an opportunity to have an interview with you you really need to come into that interview with that mindset that you are interviewing each other right so I want you guys to think about these kind of questions these are questions that I prepare for the schools that I was interviewing with and I wanted to sense number one are they you know what they say they are especially in their job descriptions and what they were giving about the job uh, the school bio you know what I mean a lot of these schools had these fabulous bios so it's very important to me to hear it from the horse's mouth and not read the bio so these are questions that I asked 
take them copy paste i absolutely don't mind but i love that these questions gave me a better understanding of where i was going and who i was signing with do you know what i mean okay so the first question i would ask is can you draw me a picture or walk me through the day of a teacher at your school specifically the grade that i'm interviewing for this will give you an idea of your workload it will give you an idea of what, what your day would look like it would give you an idea of what is expected of you okay and what what they are providing throughout the day to help you be your best version as a teacher it could be you know resources it could be um, teacher guides it could be templates it could be whatever the case may be but it gives you a better idea of how would your day at the school look like you know that's very important because you don't want to walk into your first day and have no idea what you're walking into so it's okay to ask this question in the interview I think it's very very important okay the next question I want you to answer ask them is how often do you assess my teaching okay so this is something that you know my some other schools might or sorry the HR might not know this question or know this answer but I think it's super important for her to to know that especially if it comes to appraisals and key performance indicators in terms of bonuses like how often do you assess my teaching when will you assess my teaching after my uh, first day do you know what I mean because you as well want to know when okay guys sorry I had a phone call okay so I want to pick up where I left off so how do you assess me how do you assess my teaching how often do you assess my teaching ask them that question so you want to know what they expect of you and how they assess you okay and what that assessment means for your job there if you fail that assessment do they provide training for you to equip you to better uh, pass the next assessment or do they just fire you like you need to know what is expected of you do you know what I mean okay and the next question I want you to ask them is what professional development opportunities do you have for your staff you know like what are you providing providing as professional development are you doing it annually how often do you do them um, are they in relation to the curriculum or is this outside of the school different things like that are there opportunities for me to move up the ranks what does that take like ask those questions especially if you're someone like me who doesn't believe in being stagnant in one position like I believe in progression and I believe in working your way up so that they, you feel like there's progress you know what I mean so those are the questions you need to ask so that you know what kind of school you're walking into and uh, what kind of environment you're walking into. Do you know what I mean? Is it competitive? Is everyone trying to move up? Or does it take time and you need to do a few things to get to that? Do you know what I mean? So those are really, really important um, key points to get from them, all right? The next thing is something I already spoke about, but it's what are the key performance indicators you expect of me? Now, this is another thing that I feel like uh, as teachers we need to ask more of and because this also puts the schools at a position where they need to know what they expect of you so that when they when they come at you sideways you say to them no 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 these are my key performance indicators I've been doing them and you can choose to either do over and above that but anything less than that you know that you've gone wrong but you've got something to refer back to especially when things get sour key performance indicators also give you more structure in your teaching you know you know where to go what to do how to do it you know what i mean um i think keep kpis are also most of these schools align them to um bonuses so if you are achieving a certain score in your kpi when you get assessed you actually get bonuses i remember at first leap that's what they used to do um so different schools do different things for appraisals and you know incentives to ensure that the teachers are motivated and they're working at their best ability do you know what i mean and they're giving their best um is what i mean to say and then lastly, a question that I think is very, very important that a lot of us can ask in the beginning so we don't get a surprise come the holidays is, are you offering full or half paid holidays? Now, people in South Africa might not know this, but here in China, our two major holidays are summer and winter. Summer in August, which is about two months, and winter holidays in January, Feb, and those are also two months. So some schools come at us like, oh, we'll pay you half. And some schools give 
of, of our full pay and some schools don't even pay people you know so you need to know this guys don't wait until you're in the job and you get a, a surprise when you're there ask this question in the, in the interview okay so that you know what you're stepping into and you know what to expect I think um, I think the worst thing is to walk into a situation and not know any of this information because then will then, then that will leave a really bad taste in your mouth while you're in the job you know what I mean but I think when you know the beast you sign up with you you fully are aware and you're not getting any surprises okay so yeah guys those are the five questions I really wanted you guys to hear and actually ask in your interviews give it a try see how it goes what answers are you getting so now you can compare after your interviews do three interviews put the information in front of you I'm like okay all right so this school is offering this this is not what they have they have no professional development but they do have a great package like you know so you are able to figure out what's the best option for you okay lastly I want to do do's and don'ts things that I feel like shouldn't be said but I'm gonna say them anyway I've picked this up from just watching other people uh, explain some do's and don'ts and I thought why not end off this video with that so let's start with some do's do dress professionally. As you guys can see, I'm wearing just a simple linen shirt. This is something that I could wear in an interview. I'm wearing a little bit of makeup. My hair is tight back. There's some good lighting. There's a clear background. You know, they can see me and they can see me for who I really am. So that's another thing. The next point is do wear makeup, but don't wear too much makeup because you want them to actually recognize you on the day that you get there and you don't want to portray something that you're not because then you're gonna have to keep up with it you know what i mean and in this place that we live in those things can catch up with you you know what i mean so be yourself dress professionally don't wear round necks t-shirts or anything showing cleavage cover yourself up appropriately take this job interview very seriously okay the next thing i would say that i've already said get some good lighting get a clear background shoot this during the day if you don't have box lights like me and try not to do it in selfie mode uh, in terms of your interview do it at portrait mode so you might need to get not portrait sorry landscape mode so you might need to get a tripod stand to keep your phone up so that you can actually use your hands to express your Yourself. having your phone in your hand while doing an interview might be a little bit tricky and you know might restrict you a little bit so get a tripod and you know hold the phone up with the tripod and have your you know freedom to move your hands and you know listen in on the interview last question which I think I've already given you the the ideas for is to do do have questions prepared for your interviewer, guys. This is so important. I've given you five questions you can prepare. You can absolutely have more, the more the merrier, because at the end of the day, you're signing with the school. You can ask them about visa processes. You can ask them about who's doing my visa. What's the process for that? There's so many things you can ask. These are just five, but definitely, definitely ask more, okay? Lastly, I want to do some don'ts, okay? Don't eat gum. Don't be eating something while you have your interview, guys. It's very rude and people, you know, get turned off by that. I don't want to, like, not say this, but I feel like I should. Don't be late. You want to be as prompt as possible. You want to set the bar high. You want them to remember you because they're interviewing so many people. So you want them, you want to leave a good impression, okay? So be early. Text them a day before. Are we still on? What time? Blah, blah, blah. Like, be on it. You know what I mean? And be organized. Show them that you're ready and you're willing. Okay, my love, so that is the video for today. I really wanted to keep this informative, short, and straight to the point. I will definitely write these points in the caption or in the description box if you want these questions, if you miss them. It's okay. I put them in the description box. Definitely steal them, use them, copy, paste. This is the imbuzi that you need to get your next um, international job, honey. And make sure that you um, click the subscribe button if you haven't already that will mean the world to me and watch the ads please my loves we are on the road to 14k thank you so much for your time thank you for watching i will see you guys in the next video Mwah.